All right, part four of scope dissection. We are going to be taking off the windage knob. I'm going to show you how the windage knob and the elevation knob work. We're not going to take the elevation knob off because it works the same as the windage knob. But let's just take this off so you'd use your Allen wrenches and you'd take off the cap normally like you would to re-zero. There's another cap on here that is screwed on. We take that off. Okay, holding this entire assembly are four Phillips head screws. We've already taken those out, but you can see this brass piece here is what is actually turning. So we take that whole assembly out. The brass piece right here is what's actually turning and it turns that brass rod, the threaded rod, and you can see the rod moves in or out. And what that brass rod does is it pushes on that piece of brass, which is connected to your erector assembly tube, so it moves the whole erector assembly tube left or right. And I hope you guys can see that moving inside. And that's basically how it works. The elevation knob works the same way. It pushes it up or down. Now there's a spring. If you ever notice what that little tit is on the, on the bottom of your scope on the corner, that's actually a spring that helps keep the pressure. So if, as I turn this or if I unscrew it, it pushes it back in the other direction. So it's a pretty simple concept, but you have to understand how precise it has to be made. So every little click brings that scope back to the same exact spot and tracking. That's why tracking is super important. And, you know, it's, it's difficult to get that type of precision. So let's take this out of here. I'll show you. Um, actually, let me see if I could spin this. Yeah. So this, this little tit right here inside here is going to be, well, we'll unscrew it. We're going to show you. Inside here is going to be uh, a spring connected to another piece of brass. It almost looks like a, a 22 casing. So as we unscrew this, all right, hopefully you guys can see all that. We take this out. All right, there's the spring. Come on, baby, come on out. Let me spin this again so we got gravity working with us instead of against us. And that's the piece of brass connected to that spring that just goes in that housing. And that's what keeps the pressure on your erector assembly tube as you dial it in and out. All right, that thread, threaded rod, whether it be the windage or the elevation, holds it in place in the other direction. So this keeps the tension on it. Very important. So sometimes if your scope gets stuck, you're dialing it and you, you don't see that reticle move and these can actually get bound up in there. So uh, hopefully they're nice and greased. This one is from the factory, so it doesn't get bound up in there. But you see it's all brass on brass parts, uh, well made. And we're gonna screw that sucker back in there. She's already coming out, there we go. So I don't suggest you do any of this at home. I'm doing it so I could show you guys how these things work so you don't have to take your scopes apart at home. So again, let's turn this back. Okay, erector assembly tubes moves up and down, left and right. And your parallax knob, we're gonna go into this a little more in another video, but as you turn the knob, you see that lens going back and forth, right? So that's able to adjust the focus point uh, inside the scope, it, it's actually able to move the focus point of the image. Imagine hold the magnifying glass, moving it back and forth. Uh, and when you do that, you're able to focus images at, at distant distances from your eye. So that's uh, basically how the parallax works. But we'll explain that more in a better video. So, and again, this scope was already broken. Uh, I didn't take apart a perfectly good scope. It was already broken. So uh, I got it from a buddy of mine and decided to do the video. So I hope you guys like what you've seen so far. Stand by for part five.